I made JSX for Lua because I hate static sites. <laughs> You know, without reading anything in this article, hate's a strong emotion, and it can make you build almost anything. And this seems like one of them. All right, here we go. I like JSX, but for Lua. You can write a Lua file that returns a chunk of HTML. You can compose more interesting pages by writing functions that return HTML. Here's what the home page of my site looks like in Lua X. I define whatever data I want in plain old Lua. Okay, 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 article. Okay, look at this. I cannot believe, I cannot believe this is real. Someone made this. Oh my goodness. Ben? Ben Vistness? This is the Ben Vistness? This is the business. You're giving him the business, business. Dude, this is awesome. You can use Lua Package System to organize my templates. That's pretty sweet. Whatever. Oh my goodness. That is actually pretty. Okay, this is actually pretty sweet. Why? Yeah, why? Because I hate static sites. No, seriously. I actually hate static sites. I got into programming because I wanted to make websites. When I started out, you could just copy Hitmo files up to your server and you had a website. It was magical. And PHP made it even better. You could throw in a little snippet of server side code and you had a dynamic page. Those days are gone. They're gone because React strangled it in its bed slowly. Today, I spend my time organizing markdown files in folders so a, a janky tool can cobble them together into a website. I spend my time learning weird template languages with weird functions and bad control flow. I spend my time in cloud control panels getting confused by bucket permissions and CDN settings. This man's been hurt. You can tell right away. It feels like we've regressed. 15 years ago, it was fine to run a script from scratch on every single request, but today we insist that you have to serve every personal website from a CDN. That means no fun allowed. If you... <laughs> <laughs> Akamai, no fun. Never. So if you want as much as the CC20 copyright 2023 and the footer update, you'll need to rebuild and deploy the site. I don't want that. I want my 2023 update dynamically, damn it. What's saddest to me is that when people do want that dynamism, and they often do, they end up doing it with JavaScript, making their pages heavier and slower. Then to compensate for this, they'll add some kind of serverless backend, serving, rendering, plus hydration, and a pile of extra complexity instead of just doing a little server-side code. They're wasting people's CPU time and their own money. I don't know who who this person is business with the business but i love you i love this this is so this is so good i love the fact that he got so frustrated by today's development experience just wrote a gosh just literally wrote j lua x i mean how pissed off do you have to be to write lua x so the reason why okay so people are always wondering why do i hate jsx but i do something like lua x or temple right so if you don't know temple temple is the same thing not that temple this is different this right here why do i like these but i hate the other. It's very, very simple. When you do Lua X, it only executes on the server. There is no client side integration here. I think that's the big downfall of JSX is that JSX is both a server side and a client side language. And so you end up getting this weird things where you start tying stuff in together and you're trying to reason about client and server constantly when something like a web component or something else could do such a good job because most of your functionality is pretty thin when you really understand the difference between server and client side functionality. And now you have this huge thing that you end up having to create because once you go down that route, that also means all of your client-side rendering has to go through all of the JSX. So that means you need to start figuring out how you're going to be doing your state updates. This is why Redux was born, is because you can't simply just update a place. You have to update the gosh darn whole thing. Luckily, solid with signals and all that kind of helps the entire thing, but you still end up with this giant replication state tree all over the place. It makes development really confusing and uh, upsetting and, and emotionally bruising. Okay? Okay, buddy? But why JSX? Because I like it. I've tried so many templating languages over the years like Mustache, Liquid, Nunchucks, Blade, Django, and of course Go templates, commonly seen in systems like Hugo. Go templates aren't half bad, but I'd put them as, oh, they're almost there. They're missing like a couple things, but they're pretty good. Of all these languages have basically the same design, which I'll call a preprocessor model. Yep, they all start with the assumption that a template is mostly a static piece of content, and in this case HTML with some slots to paste dynamic values. It's more or less just C preprocessor, a simple find and replace pass over the original content. Legitimate. JavaScript, emotionally damaging. I love it. But this is never actually enough. You start out with simple values and ranges, but rapidly escalate to tricky conditional logic, weird inheritance systems, and eventually custom functions written in a host language that are injected into the template language. Fair. This is actually fair. The inheritance system and thing, uh, dude, I forget what I forget what templating system is a Jinja, but the inheritance is like all backwards, and I absolutely hate it. I think Go templates are as close as you can get to pretty good. Basically, these languages are too weak to do anything interesting. When I write my article about doing Advent of code on a PS5, I found myself frequently reusing specific layouts on a wide layout that displayed two columns side by side, but reflowed to vertical mode on mobile. In Go templates, this was an utter disaster. 
Okay. Define a wide start. Define a wide middle. Define wide end. <laughs> I wonder if there's a better way to do this. I wonder if there's a better way to do this. There might just be a better way to do this, but that's funny. The problem is that no preprocessor style templates actually allow you to manipulate the HTML as data. The HTML is opaque. The template language doesn't understand it. The web pages are complex documents that often need serious logic to assemble. Logic that requires the template language to work with the document structure instead of just text. I'm shook shook right now. Even PHP falls short of this standard. Language jank and terrible design aside, PHP is at least a real programming language. It has arrays and loops and functions and so on, but it still doesn't understand HTML. It's just basically a fancier version of a preprocessor model. Yeah, that's fair. That's a fair take. But isn't Lua, isn't this just all preprocessor fancy? Aren't we all just in the end, just preprocessor fancy when you really think about it? We're all just string concatenating. I mean, at the end of the day, you're just string concatenating. That's it. That's all you do. If you think that you're doing anything else, you're mapping, you're filtering, and you're string concatenating over and over and over again. At the end of the day, it's night. It's true. Unarguable facts. I've been doing someone's back end for the main portion of my life. Okay, how does that feel? And once in a while, when I peek at the front end, oh, oh, I get scared and run back to the back end. Huh? I don't even know what that means, to tell you the honest truth. Real string processing is the friends we made along the way. It's true. It's absolutely true. This is why JSX is so much better. Better than JS inside HTML, it's HTML inside of JS. It flips the ownership around. When you need to do something interesting, you don't need to learn some underpowered language or contort your work to fit a broken system or remember which escaping functions to use. You just write code and the rest sorts itself out. So my one disagreeance here, besides for the client side stuff, drop the client side stuff. One thing that I find true among Temple, I find it the same among uh, JSX on the server and I find it the same probably in Lua as well, is that you end up making really complex abstractions for things that if you just took a little bit more time and thought about, you could probably do much simpler if you reduce the language. The complexity of the language bleeds into the complexity of the ways you solve problems. And JavaScript is an extremely simple, extremely complex language. It allows you to do anything in any way, shittily sometimes. And so that causes just like, I swear I've seen some of the craziest code because JavaScript lets you do it. JavaScript, I love it. Sometimes, yeah, <laughs> sometimes. Sometimes you, there's some clean JavaScript out there. There's some clean ones. Okay, I've seen arrays being used as objects. Yeah, we did that in Falcor. Of course we did. By the way, you shouldn't use arrays to look up ob uh, values until you have like 30 values in the array. Then you should switch it to a set or a map, depending on your needs. Carmack said any programming language feature will eventually show up uh, in a good code base. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a good way to put it. That's actually really funny. That's actually really, really funny. Uh, am I preferring Go templates over Temple? I'm not sure. I, I honestly don't know. I need more time to tell you which one I like. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try Leptos again, which is Rust's version, effectively of Temple, and I'm gonna try that all over again and see how it goes, and really just try to make my decision on these things because I just keep on doing back and, and keep doing them over and over again. I think Temple is better because of the compile time syntax checking. I agree with that. Compile time syntax checking. Right, and type checking, very, very good. It's important to note that JSX is distinct from React or Svelte, or whatever front end we usually associate it with. I'm not a fan of those frameworks. They have uh, they have a lot of ideas about client-side reactivity that I don't like and don't care about, but I really like writing HTML inside of a real programming language. Okay, I, I mean, I get the motivation, right? I, I, I'm kind of in this camp. That's why I keep coming back to Lepto slash Temple, is because I, I want that, right? I want that to be true. Why Lua? Because I like it. That's actually just a good enough reason. I've considered using JSX, but my website is built in Go, and I wanted to keep the, it, it that way. I find Go's tooling to be best in class when it comes to deploying a server. Build a binary, start it up, the end. In contrast, every time I've deployed a Node app, I have suffered immensely. Yeah, and also Go's super fast. You can literally build a million line Go project in like a second and a half. It's incredible. And then you throw a little bit of air on there. It rebuilds so fast, I can't navigate to the browser and this is me navigating to a browser. It's like going dot 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 dot. It's already refreshed. It's blazingly fast. What I wanted was uh, uh, something I could embed easily into an existing app. This is so good already. This is actually a th dude. This is why people love Lua, and I am shocked that Lua is not used more. Is that this guy is using a Go backend, and he's gonna just put Lua in it. Okay, just take a second and think about that. Lua fit the bill nicely, but even more importantly, Lua is extremely easy to parse. The entire grammar fits on one screen and the official parser is less than 1500 lines of code. Furthermore, Lua didn't use this for anything except comparisons, so there was no ambiguity. HTML tags could be used wherever tables were used. It was therefore easy to create a custom recursive descent parser. I mostly just ported the official parser to Go and modified parse simple expression to parse tags as well as tables. This is this is badass. 
I want you to know that this is badass. My transpiler doesn't even produce an abstract syntax stream. It doesn't need to. It just emits vanilla Lua code as is and converts HTML tags to Lua tables as it goes. The end result is less than a thousand lines of code. About 700 of them are just parsing Lua with the remaining 300 being used for my new features. And it took me only a couple days. This is super sweet. Embedding a Lua into a Go took about 17 minutes of my time on a Saturday. And I haven't really changed anything about the runner since then. There is something very nice about dynamic languages. Like I'm totally on team dynamic language, but I like constraining it. And this is like such a cool, I, I should figure out how more times how to use Lua. Maybe I want to play with Lua. I bet you there's already a Lua to Rust thing. And so you can build bits of your Rust system with Lua. Something about that just sounds super compelling. Because Lua, when if you've ever used enough Lua, uh, here, sorry, this is Rust. You may have heard of Rust, by the way. That's uh, Markdown, APM. Uh, one thing that I actually have become, I've be begun to like about Lua is that you can just simply use these simple doc comments, something like J, uh, something like, uh, whatever you call it, what's the stupid thing called? Uh, JS doc, and I can just be like emitter, and it just tells me, right? I ha Here's my functions, right? I can put little app comments on it, I get all the autocomplete, not only do I get autocomplete, I get all the jump, to I like, you get all the pain of, you You just get it all, it's like right there. If I wanted the, you know, uh, there we go, I just added a type to that thing, and now it knows. Do you even Java, bro? I put that comment there, I put that comment there, okay? I put it right there, you can see it. Lua is pretty neat. Lua is an uh, embedded language that is used in a lot of like C++ slash lower level projects. Vim being one of them. So Vim embeds Lua into it because it's just it's just a great scripting language. I think I've spent more time figuring out Lua's package system than writing the transpiler. Be aware of that. That's fine. Oh my goodness! Let's go! Let's go! Business with the business! Oh my goodness, thank you. This By the way, this article is friggin' awesome. I just want to let you know this article is awesome. Uh, I absolutely love that. And yes, the, the package system is probably the confusingest part of Lua. You have to have things... I don't really understand how pathing works, other than at least I understand it from a, a Vim based thing. One based arrays, annoying, but it's not the most annoying thing. It just isn't the most annoying thing. I don't like it. That's it. Dude, nice. I like to see that. All right, before Go templates. Oh, yes, you have to do this picture source. Yep, you have to do these. This, if you guys don't know what's happening here, you can define your own functions you want to be able to call inside of your Go templates, right? And so you can see that there's this whole template thing going on right here. A lot of blah, 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 blah. Whereas you get to do the exact same thing in Lua. And Lua is probably just easier to do it in because you're not really caring too much about types. You got fast iterators. You actually have iterators, which is great. Unlike JavaScript, loser. <laughs> There we go. This is great. My uh, Demos 3D article required me to generate unique IDs for each uh, Desmos graph. In Hugo, I had to use the Scratch system to store and manipulate data in Hugo itself. I can just do a global in my Lua X file. Furthermore, I register new Des Desmos shortcode globals across my entire site. This is now just a Lua function specific to the article. This is cool. I think this is a good, this is actually a really great argument for why you should do it. I, I, I like this. Maybe I could be more into this. Maybe, just maybe, I could be into this. This is great. I'm not gonna, uh, dude. Uh, too long. I'm not going to read all of that. Congratulations, or I'm sorry. Closing thoughts. My goal with this project was to make myself happy, and I think I succeeded. Again, I, keep, I feel like I'm a broken drum sometimes. This is one of the most important goals of any side project. Find something that upsets you and fix it your way, what you think is a great way. Go research and come up with a stupid new solution. Doesn't It, it doesn't have to be life-changing. It doesn't have to be Twitter cred. Just do it and make something. And guess what? You're going you're gonna to learn a crap ton. This guy's writing a descent parser. Okay, business over here is writing a descent parser just to get everything done. Added in some HTMX into the parsing. Called it a day. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful, beautiful. I love it. I'm very happy now with Lua X feel so far. I, it's it's not per, ready for production in the sense that I have cut several corners on the parser, but it meets all my needs right now and I love using it. Taking a step back though, it's very gratifying to be able to bang out a transpiler in a weekend. Earlier in my career, I would have started with Lex and Yak and probably gotten lost. This has happened multiple times. These days though, I understand compilers well enough just to sit down and write one and it feels great. This is awesome. Business, are you, are you in the chat? Are you still in the chat? If you're still in the chat, what, what's your go-to book? Don't build React into Lua. Please don't do that. Purdu uh, temple slash JSX, good enough. What's your book, please? Because I personally am a big fan of Interpreter Book. I think that Interpreter Book is the best one. The Bible. It's a pretty good one, but it, that's not really, it's not really good for learning how to make a compiler. I like this one a lot, and you get 30% off and I get zero money for it. Lua is my passion. <laughs> least emojis, least emojis aren't your culture. 
Okay, let's see if, I don't know if uh, Viznus is still here, but if he is, Thorsten is a legend. Thorsten is a legend. Rust go to Rust. Exactly. The Dragon Book. The Dragon Book is pretty definitive for compilers. I agree. I like the, uh, the Dragon Book is really good, but I really, really do like the Thorsten one. It's super simple and it just, it gets you right into the saddle and it's really, really good. And you can complete, honestly, if you really sat down and you were really motivated, you could complete it in an extremely small amount of time. 20 hours complete the whole gosh darn thing. Jonathan Blow thinks the Dragon Book sucks. I mean, to be fair, Jonathan Blow thinks everything sucks. Okay, I like the guy. Don't get me wrong. Oh, he did? Gary Bernard's uh, screencast about making compilers. Nice. Okay. Okay, my bad. I, 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 I like John. Okay, I think he's great. I think his advice is super good. He also hates everything. So it's like, is it bad? I don't know. John Blow is hyper specialized in one area of programming. How come everyone cares so much about what he thinks? Contrarian equals John. I'm pretty contrarian myself though. So I like, I, I don't want to, I don't want to dunk on the guy. I'm pretty contrarian myself. I'm the, I'm, I feel like the lone voice in the wilderness crying that you shouldn't use React constantly. I'm just trying to be like, people, stop using React for everything. Maybe, like maybe JavaScript isn't the best answer for everything. I spent almost all my year working on projects for other people. While I am proud of the work I did I, and I enjoy it, there's still something special about making tools for yourself. Does anyone else in the world want to make their websites in a weird dialect of Lua? Maybe not, but I do, and that's enough. Agreed. I don't know what the future holds for Lua X, and it's not ready for other people to use, and I'm not sure it'll ever be. So rather than tell you to go to luax.dev and start building your website with my tool, here's what I'll say. Try building something yourself. My goodness, this guy is just based... Just, just, there's going to be a, literally, on YouTube, there's going to be a wall of comments that are just based. That's it. Business based. Business based. Try writing code for you and you alone. Don't worry about whether it will look good on your resume or attract lots of stars on GitHub. Just write something that feels good for you. Explore weird ideas and see where it takes you. Who knows? Maybe someday other people will like it too. Earned. Earned, based, and followed. And reported. So good. Love that. This is great. This is absolutely great. This is, li I mean, this is the literal reason why I'm building APM. I just want, I just want to have an APM counter. It's just a, I just want an APM counter. Notice how the profile isn't an anime waifu. Facts and logic, that is not an anime waifu. I can tell right away, that's not one. I can tell with using just my eyes. It's not. I'm glad you enjoyed it, dude. It was, it, this is such a good article. Uh, I like Go templates, but I can, I can tell that they can become a bit of a pain in the ass. I'm still worried about JSX though. I think, okay, here's my real take. I'm gonna give you guys an honest ass take and not just like a stupid take, okay? Go templates suck. Temple.guide sucks. Lua X sucks. React sucks. Lepto sucks. They all suck. They just suck differently. Choose your suck and enjoy it. HTMX sucks. Like everything sucks. It's all broken. None of it solves the problem universally because you can't have a universal solution. Embrace the suck, discover each way things suck, and then choose the least sucky for your project. There you go. That's it. The name. <laughs> the sucks a gin. Wow.